Uh, earlier on we did the front brakes, uh, stripped them down, measured the pads, did the brake leading. Today, this afternoon, we're going to be doing the, uh, the rear brakes. Uh, the difference being on the back, these are shoes because it's a mechanical brake on the front, it's a hydraulic brake, so they're called, they're the pads. So the first thing that we need to do is remove the split pin and the torque arm and remove that nut. thing we need to do is disconnect the brake rod from the brake arm and to do that you simply press the brake pedal, disconnect that, make sure you don't lose the washer. Right, next we need to do adjust the tensioners. So we just slacken them off. Slacken them. using a 14mm spanner. Next we need a 17mm socket on there and a 22mm ring spanner. So the reason why we use a ring spanner on this side is because, you, because of the exhaust we can't actually get a socket and a ratchet into it. Take the pressure off, move the adjusters down, take take the castellated nut, that's the special name for these which slots in. Because when we put it back, we're putting a, a split pin through, and that's what holds the nut in place. And there we are, we've got the wheel. The bit that we need to concentrate on is the thickness of the shoe linings. As you press your brake pedal, the brake arm, which is sat on them splines, it turns and it turns that flat spot there. And as that flat spot turns, it forces your shoes out, and it forces your shoes out against the drum, which is what makes you break. Uh, as with the pads, we need to measure the thickness of the shoes, so make sure them two poles are connected. Make sure it's at zero and it's in millimetres. Because there's no discernible lip for the metal to sit on, unlike the pads, put your thumb at the base and slide that down. So the thickness of that it's basically 3.1 millimetres. So that again is within tolerances. So to put them back on, you need to hold them like that, make sure the springs are connected. Make sure the rounds sit on the point there and the flats sit on the cam. Make sure they're sitting, the seating. If they're not seating properly, just get a little screwdriver in there. And just 
flick it back in. Oh. There we go. So, once you've measured both sides, just pop it back into its recess. There's your torque bolt. Yeah, that just flops about in there, so we just need to put that in last. Make sure that the space is still attached in there. Whilst it's off, make sure there's no damage to the cush driver rubbers. If there are any damage to cush driver rubbers, that would be rocking about in there. So need to slide it back in as far forward as possible. Reattach the chain. Just need to raise that up. Slide the spindle through. Make sure that you don't forget the spacer. Also make sure you don't forget the adjuster. Once we've got the back wheel on, we just loosely, you don't want to be tightening it up too tight just yet, because we need to adjust it. Now, on the top of the swinging arm, there's little notches. And we to correspond them notches with the notches on the tension. So... If you don't get the notches corresponding right, basically your wheel's going to be going down the road at an angle. You'll scuff the tyres and it'll affect the handling. Once you've got the notches lined up, tighten that nut up so that locks the tensioner in place and now we can tighten this up. line up the hole with one of the slats in the castellated nut, like so, then we can put a split pin straight the, right the way through and that will lock that nut in position. So we just need to tight, tighten these just as up so they don't come loose. We need to have the torque arm bolt at the back. That lines up through there. You have one washer, then you have a split washer, which holds the nut in place. Well, the last thing you need to do is just adjust the brake lever, the brake bar, so that when you turn, when you press the brakes, make sure that they work.